So, Now, brethren, we have this merciful high priest given to us. And in Hebrews 5, it says, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Now, this role of a high priest was originated by God for the Israelites, that a man would go from the presence of the Lord, could go to the people, take their offering for their sins, go back to the Lord, and offer it to him as a sacrifice. So you see that this was a very delicate process. It required a perfect display and strict following of the orders that God gave for it. Because not just anyone could do this job. God, first of all, he chose an Israelite, which was a nation cultured by the Lord and his ways. It wasn't like any other nation. And he chose a tribe within that nation, the Levites, which were known for their faithfulness of the Lord. And he chose a man within there that had to go through a process through which he must be totally clean. He had none of his own rights, as we say, but devoted himself completely for the Lord for this service. So in this, don't we see the familiarity of another one that we know of, Jesus Christ our Lord? Jesus, he came from Israel, again, the nation cultured by the Lord, from the lineage of David, who was a man after God's own heart, and he lived a spotless life with the will of the Father being his drive for his ministry here on earth. He was the Son of God. So we see how, again, he was this perfect and the only one who could do this job as a high priest. And in, again in Hebrews 5 it says, Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for he, that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. So in order for Christ to be an aid to his people righteously, he had to experience the weight and the vexation that the world has on people. He was humbled. He suffered hunger. He suffered thirst, sorrow, lack of sleep, grievances, vexation, persecution, temptation. So there is nothing that a child of God goes through that they cannot go to the Lord and him not be able to help them with. He went through all this so that he would be an effectual minister Amen. to his people. So this isn't also that we may have excuses. Should we sin that grace may abound, God forbid. Amen. This purpose was for Christ to eliminate this issue that we had with sin so that we would not no longer be enslaved by it so that we could come to him to have it taken away, to have it forgiven. And this is that exact reason why God did this, ensuring the title of Christ being a merciful high priest. And in 1 John it says, My little children, those things I write unto you that ye sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So as we continue to endure these trials and rumors of wars and sorrow and conflict, even the worst dishes that are our own flesh gives us to struggle with we aren't alone in this endurance Christ also and foremost devoted his life to the Lord endured hardship and overcame the world and so we who are his people his children we can do this too so seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens Jesus the Son of God let us hold fast our profession for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Amen. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Amen. Those words, I'm, um, I'm very thankful that we have brethren that are they have a desire to grow in, in their ability to be able to express the things that they've seen. And I want to give specific thanks for um, um, all the saints. I mean, I, I, as we were, were sitting there yesterday, started thinking about the, the, the ministry that the saints have, just seeing one of the saints, just thinking about one of the saints. It, ha it has a a very rejuvenating effect on your spirit. 
to, to know. And, and, and of course, you know, you, you, you start thinking, uh, God's always with me. He's right here. He's right now. He's, yeah. he's, he's a very present help in the time of need. Well, this is, this is very good. I also wanted to give thanks for Brother Paul and Sister Roxanne and helping out with the recording yeah. of these things. Um, Amen. You know, this, this is a, it's a great thing to have brethren that are willing. Yes, I mean, I don't know if you've ever been in a place that they weren't, but this is a very good blessing. Today I want to continue thinking about this aspect of a merciful. We, we have a merciful God, and, and because of this, because it's an extension of who He is, He's in, in, put in place the very thing that we needed was a merciful high priest. Now, I'm going to assume that the, the brother know the office of a high priest. Now, I, this would be like another whole sermon to try to go over all this at one time. But um, if you don't, if you're listening to this and you don't understand, just go on YouTube and type in Given O. Blakely. He did a whole series on this. And you just go ahead and just enter into that. And at the end of that series, you can go back and listen to this. This is, um, God put this in place. God has is, is in place this, this um, office, as you want to, if you want to call it that, because there was a lot in the, in the Old Covenant, it was a lot that we needed to know. Salvation is much more involved than, than, than any man dared to imagine. Yes. See, I mean, it encompasses a lot of different aspects of, of, of a who we are, a who God is, and, and bringing those two together was much more complicated than, um, than um, we, we, would, we, we, would, we would be able to figure it out. Like, what do we need? We don't know what we need. God knows what we need. And so he's put as a, as a, in between. Jesus is in between you and God. You can't come to God independent from Christ. There's not any way to do that. And so God's, God's established these, these things in order that we might know. And so we can enter into fellowship with him. In, um, in, and I tell you, when you see a need for the high priest, you're, see, like now you're, you're thinking along with God. When you start realizing, I need this high priest. You now you've made some progress. I read the text again. Wherefore in all things, wherefore in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and a faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. And today I want to focus on the fact that Jesus is the merciful high priest. This is, this is, this is he's the only one that could hold this office. This, this had to be, you got two different distinct things that had to happen. Jesus had to be holy man, and he had to be holy God. He, in order to hold this office, I'm talking about, in order to be a merciful and a faithful high priest, he had to absolutely 100% identify with the people. So much so that he had to be born of a woman. Now that's, 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 that's I would say that's about 100% identity, wouldn't you? Yeah. He had to, he had to, be a man if he was going to save men. Man requires, looking at it in the big picture, man requires every office that Jesus holds. There isn't, you know, men may hold a lot of different offices, and yet a lot of them just be like just a, for namesake. Someone's got to hold the office, so we'll give you. You'll be the mailman and you'll be the mayor. Some small towns, either one man does it all. Yeah. But does he really do it all? I mean, you know, in that little town, they have one instance a month, you know. But you put him in New York, he's not going to be able to do it all. Yes. You, put, you put him over a billion people, and he's like going to be overwhelmed, as Moses would tell you. But see, Jesus, he's capable. Jesus can handle. Every office that Jesus has is, is a, a functioning office. It's a, it's a, it, he's been given this office in order that the eternal purpose of God may, may come to pass. That it, it actually, on the, on the last day, it will be, the, well done. Well done, son. You've executed everything that I gave you to do. And God has given Jesus a lot to do. So man requires every office... That is, if they are to make it safely into the presence of God without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Now, that's what it's going to require for you to stand in the presence of God. You're going to have to be spotless. Now, who's in charge of that? I praise God that it's not me that's in charge of that. 
How are you going to make yourself spotless? He gave us the law to prove us that he can't do it. You can't do it. And yet he says, do it. Why? Because it's got to be done. It's got to be done. So see, God knows man. God, God created man. And so he's, he gave us the law to show us that you, you don't have the capacity to, to know everything that I require of you. You can pick up on a few things, and yet when it comes down to the wire, you're going to have to have someone that knows God, someone that is God, to be able to bring you to God. They needed someone who was really one of them, really born of a woman, really tempted, really suffered, really infirmed, and yet one that was really holy, really righteous, really just. Now, say, how are you going to get that out of a, someone born of Adam? You're not going to get it out of... Yeah. See, God taught us. He gave us the old covenant. It was, a, was a, like a workbook. We look back at it and we say, we work with... If we go back there and we, we, we study it, we'll find God was showing us all kinds of implications of sin and implications of salvation. How are you going to get this out of man? So, see... Now, I'm, I'm cautious when I say God needed. I'm not implying that God isn't self-sufficient or that of himself he needed anything. And yet, this enterprise that God has started called salvation, you see, this introduced some things that God, just by him it, it, desiring to, to expose this, this sides of his nature, this grace and this long-suffering and his mercy, he kind of imposed certain limitations on himself. If he was going to do that, he needed a Christ. This is what God, God did this himself. Because he wanted to divulge these things. Now this was required. God's holy. God, God's eyes are too pure to behold iniquity. He's going to judge it if he sees it. He's going to do it. So see, Christ is like... God's buffer, as it were. Now, I'm speaking cautiously. I want you to know. I, I don't want to imply something about Jesus that God hasn't. But at the same time, men should never feel bold enough to try to approach God without Jesus. Doesn't, you're not going to make any progress there. You're going to become consumed. Well, and I'm also not implying and saying, and when I say that he, he was made like unto sinful flesh, he, Jesus never took upon him a sinful nature. And I see this has got to be made known. Jesus was not just like me. Praise God, because he couldn't save me then. He's not just like me. He was born of a woman. Why? Because he had to be. He had to, he had to take on the, the, the he had to take on humanity, as it were, and yet at the same time remain separate from sinners, right? He, he couldn't be a sinner and save sinners. And yet, at some point in time, he was going to take, he was going to become sin, right? Amen. Well, we needed this. This is, God knew we needed it. God has put him in place. See, Christ was not the descendant of Adam. He was not. Amen. He was born of a woman, but God was his father. Amen. God was his father. Jesus was born of the seed of the woman. I, I just I like the sound of that. See, the, the, one, the very one that Satan thought he brought the whole the world down to destruction. The same one, the seed of the woman. God used it to crush his head. This is just like God to do this. Now, if you want to think about it, the greatest proof of Christ's humanity and one of the most profound realities is that Jesus died. I, you don't need to tell me anymore. If Jesus can die, he was a man. He was a man. He could die. That's how much Jesus was a man. Yeah. And yet Jesus could descend into the depths of the earth, take sin away, leave it there, and come back. He was God. <laughs> it's all right there. Amen. Not only did man need someone who was flesh and blood. In other words, he, he had a body like this, but he had more than he had. He, had, he was he's able to be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. Now see, he had to have it, the emotional side. In other words, Jesus could have his feelings hurt. Yeah. He could. Yeah. Not only could Jesus be tired and sit down at the well, see, he, he could, people could say something that would incite him yeah. 
He, he was emotional. Why? Because he was a man. And yet, he was God and that he could do something about it. <laughs> Peter, you know, he's walking out on the water to him. And, and he starts to sink and he says, help. And Jesus can do something about it. Now, none of the other people in the boat, they could have a lot of concern. I mean, they could be like really emotional, like, oh, poor Peter. But they couldn't do anything about it. But see, Jesus had both. He, he, he was a man. He, he could be touched and he was God. He could reach down and Amen. pick him right up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to walk back now, Peter. You see, we needed both. We need one that can be touched but something I can't do about something. I need help with my infirmities. Jesus is, is the right man. Amen. He's the right man. When you see the sufferings of Christ clearly, then you can make the right connection when you're called upon to suffer for his namesake. But see, where do we learn about that? We learn about when you look in the face of Christ. He's the one that's, that's suffered all things. So you look on him and you start understanding his sufferings, and then your sufferings, well, one, they fade in the background, don't they? Yeah. It's like my sufferings can't even begin to compare with just even the outward sufferings of Christ, much less the inward, yes. those that he, he comes, you know, Jesus had his great moments. Here he is on the mountain, and he's, he's transfigured, and they're, they're seeing something about Jesus they never saw before, but Jesus had to come down the mountain. He gets to the bottom, and here... So what happened? I was only gone a few minutes. How long am I going to suffer you? Jesus suffered just being here. Yeah, just having to put up amen. with unbelief. And yet, see, he knew. He knew what was in man. He, he knew what he was getting into. This wasn't like a, a revelation to Jesus. He knew. And yet, see, his desire paralleled the Father's desire. See, he was in perfect alignment with the will of God. He gets there on the garden, and he's praying if there's any other way. And why did he tell us that? Because he wanted us to know there was no other way. Yeah. This was it. This was, there was no other plan. This was it. Jesus had to lay down his life in order that we might have life. And he was willing to do that. He was willing. Now, he calls us into the same kind of fellowship. You're going to lay down your life in order to have life, or you're not going to have it. Amen. You, can't, you can't wrest life out of the hand of the Savior. It's not going to happen that way. Men may think like this, but to the degree that you're willing to lay down your life, that's the only degree you have any life. But you do. If you do, see, Jesus is very sensitive. He can be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. Now... As we examine our great high priest, we find that there is a lot more involved in dying for sins than just being a man. God made a lot of men, but never a man like Jesus. Never, I mean, just even the outward signs of his birth should tell us this was a special man. I don't remember of anybody else having his own star. Jesus had his own star. It, 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 they followed it, and it stopped right over He had to come from the right lineage, right? He had to. Now, you, couldn't, you couldn't follow a Christ that was born from somewhere else than other than what the Scriptures told you. He had to be from the right lineage. God had set up thousands of years of prophecies about this one that was going to come. And he was going to be like a branch. He was going to be like growing up out of parched ground. He was going to take away sin. He, Jesus had to do that. It wasn't just something to, 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 to want or to hope for. Jesus had to come and actually do every single word. Remember, talking about Judas. He says, how, how else is the scripture going to be fulfilled? It's got to be one of my own. Jesus had to choose his own betrayer. Think about that. And then he had to get close with him. He had to be one of his own, familiar. Yeah. It had to be. And Jesus did it anyway. Whether or not how he felt about it, he did it anyway. Amen. Why? Because it had to be done. Yeah. It had to be done. Yeah. He gets to the end and he says, friend, you betray me with a kiss, friend? It wasn't, he said, in fact, that word's a pretty special word. It wasn't talking about friend like Peter, friend. It's talking about one of what's in my company, one that's close to me, yeah. close proximity, not close in heart. 
It's a different word. Look it up. It, 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 why did Jesus have to do that? Because the scriptures had to be fulfilled. Why? Because he was, he was the great high priest. One day he showed up. I can just imagine John the Baptist, his whole life. John the Baptist's whole life was given to God. In the time, he, even before he was born, he had the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He was born into this world with one purpose, to reveal the Christ. Reveal this great high priest. Now, here he is out there doing the work of the Lord, been doing it a long time. And one day, he sees Jesus coming. Oh, what a day that was for John. He sees him coming. He said, oh, it's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. One of the accounts says, when he come up, he said, I, this, is, he said this is why I'm baptizing. You wonder why John baptized? So he could identify the Christ. Yes, sir. This is the one. So John, see, he was like in his heart, he knew my ministry's over now. I get to go home. Even after everything that was spoken about Christ was fulfilled, even after um, all those things, there are a lot of things if you go through, and it's a lot of things. There was a lot of things that had to be worked in Jesus. And I'm very cautious when I say this, but, but this is what our text is telling us. There's a lot of things that were worked in Jesus that was he was being perfected for his eternal ministry. That's right. See, God can't be touched. He can't be... God is not tempted with evil. He's not. Jesus was. Mm -hmm. Now, he, he was tempted at all points like as we are. So I'll just say it just the way the Bible says it. He was tempted at all points as we are. Why? Because we're his brethren and those were the ones that he was sent to save. So in other words, he had, he had to be able to identify a condition that's in you so he could minister to it when it happens. It's, it's, otherwise, there, if there was any vulnerability in, 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 in the high priest, any at all, to where he couldn't identify where you were at, believe me, Satan would find that spot. Yeah. He would. But see, there isn't any. He was tempted at all points. All points like as we are, yet without sin. So Jesus is really the only one that knows the way of escape all the time. Because he always escaped, right? Amen. But Jesus knows. And not, not only, Jesus can manufacture one for you. Amen. In the temptation, he can make a way of escape. Amen. And now you got to be able to trust that. See, this is the point, the point that he, this Hebrew writer is telling us that we're going to have to be able to trust that he's a faithful and a merciful high priest. To where you're not, a, you're not afraid to live for God because in, in, right in a moment of, of, of this crucible time, Jesus can come through with, with a way of escape. Just open it right up. But he doesn't do that for people who aren't trusting in him. He doesn't do that for people who aren't hoping in him. So anyway, see, he's written this for our admonition because we're the ones that the temptations are coming on. Jesus isn't being tempted anymore. Jesus is at the right hand of God, exalted. He's, he's not... He was tempted. Yeah. Jesus isn't weary anymore. Amen. He was weary. Yeah. And now he's, he's able to be a faithful and a merciful high priest in things pertaining to God. Now, I wrote it in here somewhere, but, but God doesn't have to make the word flesh to give you more money. That, that, that's just like kind of almost like absurd just to even think. I mean, Abraham, God gave him lots of riches, right? Lots of cattle, lots of silver, lots of gold. <coughs> didn't, have to, didn't have to be made born in, from the seed of the woman to do that. Or how about maybe just to... To give you a healthy life down here, a nice healthy life. He didn't, he didn't have to do that. I mean, there, there's all kinds of things you could, applications you could say, God, if, if it didn't take Jesus to be made of the seed of the woman and to die for sins and to be exalted at God's right hand, it can't be the most important thing. Amen. Amen. Because these are the things Jesus came, came to take away sin. All right? Now he's telling you, I came to be, to be fitted for this high priestship to where you can be fitted for glory. 
Well, it behooved him. Now, you, it, I just like to think of that word. I like that word. It behooved him. It was right. This was the right thing to do. I mean, if God was going to save men, this had to be set in place, in other words. It behooved him. And so he, he didn't look at it with disdain. I'm being... I'm having to learn obedience by the thing I, things I suffer. That's what it says about it. Isn't that what it says? He learned obedience by the things he suffered. He didn't look at it with disdain because he knew this is part of my, it's part of my ministry. I, I'm, I'm being fitted. See, I don't want to imply that Jesus taking away sins was anything other than what God said. Because see, this is absolutely necessary. Jesus has to die and take away sins. Yet if he wasn't fitted for this high priest ministry, it wouldn't, do, it wouldn't make a whole lot of difference, would it? If, in other words, if when you came into kingdom, God took away your sins and then said, go out there and do your best. How long would that last? We got to have a high priest. We got to have a merciful and a faithful high priest and things pertaining to God. If we're going to make it through, we got to have Jesus superintending our life, leading us, right? He's our shepherd. He's leading us to the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Why, why is he doing that? Because if he wasn't there doing it, we wouldn't make it. Right. But he is there. See, that's the whole point. He is there. It behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Now, does that give you some confidence there? Yeah, <laughs> he, he wanted to be like his brethren, I mean, it isn't like Jesus is like an alien from us. He's our brother. He's, he's, a, he's our elder brother. Oh, he, why? Because God's a merciful God. God's been divulging from the very beginning. He, his revelation to men, he's merciful. They're in the garden. Why didn't God just condemn them all right at that moment? He's a merciful God. God's showing he's a merciful God. And look, all the different aspects of salvation are tailored to, to divulge this. If a person will just give themselves to looking into who Jesus is, they'll say, God's merciful. Look, we didn't deserve this. This isn't what we deserved. I'm sure glad we didn't get what we deserved. But see, now in Christ, in Christ, he's able to give you what he's made you to deserve. <laughs> There's a, that's good. God's merciful. There again, I, I uh, cautionarily say, but I'm going to say it anyway, because this needs to be said. If God was going to express His mercy to those who had sinned, He needed Christ to intercede on their behalf. See, you see, and I went over this already, that God can't be tempted of evil. But see, when Jesus died and took away sins, it was in order that He could sit at the right hand of God. Now, see, He already took away sin. Okay, so some people don't understand this. Like, well, then what is there, need, why is there sin? He took it away, all right? You don't have to sin. The power of sin has been, has been destroyed now, and yet men do. So he, God's put Jesus at his right hand, and if you'll confess your sins, he'll take that salvation that he's already appropriated, and he'll effectualize it to you. He'll, he'll, in other words, he'll give it to you. you. You'll actually, you'll see the significance of it. You'll taste of your sins being taken away, and you'll learn that he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Amen. See, that's not something that's a one-time thing. Amen. It's just like if you confess your sins, now, that could be tonight, that could be two years from now, but when you sin, or if you sin, if you'll confess it, you'll see why Jesus put, why God put Jesus at his right hand. This is why. He's, he's effectualizing salvation to men. In, in other words, if Jesus doesn't effectualize it, you don't have it. It's got to be made real. Otherwise, it, it becomes like a, like a, uh, there's another page on someone's catechism somewhere. It's real. It's a, he's a living man, and he's, a, he's taken the salvation. He's appropriated and making it real to you. To where eventually you say, I don't want to sin. No, I don't want to sin. Well, when you don't want to do something, you probably won't do it nearly as much. I was thinking about this, you know, there's, there's a sense in which God needed Christ in order for Christ to effectual, effectualize or, or, make, or make our, our infirmities real, I don't know if that's the best word, but he made it 
to where God could, to some degree, be touched with it too. God's said Christ at his own right hand. It's God's Christ, right? This is God's Christ. Amen. So he's doing something for God that um, had actually had to be done if God was going to save sinful men. They said, James says it this way, Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Yet we see Jesus was tempted, and now having been tempted and knowing what it's like to be tempted, he can succor them. See, he, he, can, he can give to them what they need and then, as it were, turn to God and, and take that same feeling and effectualize it to God to where God understands. See, it's, it's hard to say it in, in men's words. I don't, want, I don't even want to say it in my words. You see, what God put him there as the Christ to do this work. So in other words, to where the people would actually get the grace of God. How are you going to get that to the people? It's through Christ, through this intercessor. Amen. They get it. Yeah. The grace originated from God. See, the central most important person in the Bible is God. And he's God's Christ. God set him there. Jesus, as it were, volunteered for this position. I'll, I'll go. I'll do your will, Father. Yeah. And the volume of the book that's written on me, I'll do it. I'll submit to it. But see, he's doing this work for God. Yeah. If God's going to save men, he needs Christ. Amen. See, God never had to learn anything, right? I mean, I don't ever read in the Bible any place where God ever had to learn. But Jesus learned obedience. Now, it doesn't demean Jesus. It's a, he was a submitting to being fitted for this place. Yeah. He had to have somebody there that could relate to men and at the same time do the same thing for God. Though he were a son, Hebrews 5, 8. Though he were a son, see, Jesus didn't lose any of his divinity. None of it. Not one bit when he came to earth. Actually, if you see it right, he added... He added this, this um, character, as it were, this, this, this ability to his character to be able to be touched. Yeah. In other words, he could be effectual. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. You see how he ties that right in? Yeah. Jesus suffered being tempted. He suffered. Now, if you suffer being tempted, it, it, this is the big if. We're living in a day when people... I, I fear don't suffer being tempted. They go ahead and sin and then they try to seek forgiveness for it. And that's, that's not the way that Jesus is presented in the scriptures. He suffered being tempted and he's able to succor those who suffer being tempted. Yes, yes. You see how he, he brings, you don't have to sin. Jesus never did sin. So I don't know how much sympathy Jesus has for people who sins. You see what I'm saying? He, it's, he wants you to come during the temptation stage and be suffering. So I see the, my children are suffering. Yeah. Let's give them grace, Father. And the Father says, yes, I can see that. Amen. Give them grace. Amen. See, then, then you don't have to sin. Yeah. He's saying, no. Where did the no come from? You got grace. Amen. That, that's where it came from. Yes, and being made perfect. <laughs> I see what suffering will do for you. <laughs> they, well, I've been suffering. Well, you're being made perfect. I can see that. I can see, brethren. You've been made perfect. Amen. See? God's put you here. He's put you in an arena where you can suffer. You're being made perfect. All right? And being made perfect, he became. Now, this is the eternal God we're talking about. He became. Wait a minute. There was something, some element of his character that didn't have this before he suffered. He suffered. And he became. The author of eternal salvation. In other words, this thing that God had planned out for before the foundation of the world was beginning to take shape now. They had, we got the high priest. We can do the work. You can't do the work without the high priest. You just can't. God imposed salvation in such, or, or created salvation in such a manner that the high priest has got to be in place if anything's going to get from God to the people. Amen. God's never had a single infirmity, ever. Has God ever been infirmed? Never. I can't find anywhere. I looked all over. Couldn't find it. God has never been infirmed, yet the qualification of a high priest required that they be compassed with infirmity. Isn't that what it says in Hebrews 5.1? Isn't that what it says? It says, for every high priest, it didn't say just the ones on the earth, every high priest 
taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God. Now, isn't that, it kind of fits right in with what, what we just, that's, a, that's the scripture we got. He's a merciful and high priest in things pertaining to God. So people really need to stop taking what's God and, giving, and tripping it to man. Jesus is there for God. And to give the God things to men, the gifts. And if they don't get it, if Jesus doesn't get it, we don't get it. Yeah. He doesn't. Jesus is the only man that ever resisted every temptation. Jesus is the only man that, that knows the way out of every trial. The apostles actually highlighted this quite a bit. They talked a lot about Jesus. Did you notice that? I know you have. That's kind of rhetorical. But gee, the, the apostles, they saw Jesus more clearly. And, and so they, they're very impressed with Jesus. You know, you can tell if someone's impressed with Jesus whether or not they talk about him. Yeah. Yeah. If people don't talk a lot about Jesus, they just haven't been impressed with him. They haven't really seen him. Then maybe they saw him in somebody else. But when you see Jesus for yourself, see, you, you become very impressed with him. He's very impressive. The apostles highlighted this aspect of Christ's nature because it's what we need in order to have confidence in God. God's going to get to us the resources that we need. He's going to do it, but He's always going to do it through Christ. Always. He set Jesus up as the administrator of the new covenant. So we don't get any of the new covenant blessings independent from Jesus. And we wouldn't want to anyway. Hebrews 2.18 says, for in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. So let the proclamation be sounded out that Jesus is able to intercede on your behalf. He's able to do it. No matter what, whatever you find yourself in, do you think you can find yourself in a situation that Jesus can't handle? No. It doesn't make any difference where you're at. What? Jesus, he's, he's, able, to, he's able to intercede. He's able to identify See, you can't do anything about a, a situation until you properly identify it. Jesus can identify it, and he can, he can succor. He can give you what you need. Uh, that he might be a merciful. That he, he might be. Jesus is the one that's, that's suffered. So Jesus is the one that's touched with the feeling of your infirmities. The first part of Jesus' present ministry is Godward. He's there for God. To do, see, God's, God's made a lot of choices. He's made a lot of de determinations. God, Jesus is there. Jesus says, all that the Father hath given me will come to me, right? And I will in no wise cast them out. So nobody that God has ever given to Jesus did Jesus cast out. Yeah. Well, why? He's, he's the merciful, faithful high priest. He's faithful to God first. Jesus isn't going to give the good things to the dogs. He's not going to do it. Yeah. He's, Jesus isn't going to cast the pearls before the swine. Not Jesus. He's faithful. It's Godward and it's manward. Jesus' responsibility is to men. I mean, you say, well, w w it's not like we hold him responsible. He is. He's faithful. So we can trust him. You can think of it like this. If Jesus ever left heaven, the flow of grace would instantly cease. You'd never get another drop of grace if Jesus left heaven. Because God's not going to give it to you direct. It's going to come through the one he set up. So God has no relationships with men outside the person of his son. None. There is none. And, and, and every relationship he had before Christ died was in view of Christ dying. Now, I, I was thinking about this. We come to the table of the Lord. We remember. We remember his death. Now, it was just as potent for God to, to remember that he was going to die. It was just as potent. He could have dealings or connections with sinful men because Jesus was going to die. So fundamentally, I mean, the bottom line of my thinking was Jesus, God has set Jesus at his own right hand in order to do them good. He wants to do men good. God is good. Amen. So in order for him to express that, 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 um, 
that goodness towards men, he's got to have Christ as an intercessor. If men are going to be saved, and I'm, I'll draw this to a close. I think I'm running out of time. But if, if, if men are going to be saved, if they're going to end up salvation having been effectual, then they're going to need someone to start their faith. They can't start it on their own. Men don't have, this isn't, faith isn't like something dormant that's in every man that, that is awakened. Men don't have faith to begin with. That's the problem. They don't. But they're, if they're going to make it, they've got to have someone to start it, to author their faith, yes, and then to nurture their faith. See, they're, they're, really, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So see, as you have faith, God's working in you to, to curb this and to get rid of that and to, and to accentuate that and to give yourself to the Lord. It's all by faith. So you need someone to nurture your faith. And, so, and then you're going to have to have someone that finalizes. He's the finisher of your faith, that, that, that confirms your faith. So Someone that, that, that makes you know that you have faith and that you're... you're that's... Um, he gives us so many, so many... I, we could go over many accounts in the Scripture where God did this very thing. Called Abraham out, you know. He came out, so he gave him something else. Gave him a little bit more. Showed him a little bit more. And what the result was that Abraham had a little bit more of God and God had a whole lot more of Abraham. See, this is the way it is. God's leading us. We're being saved. Bottom line, we're being saved. Why? Because we have a faithful and a merciful high priest. We have him. He's right there. He's, he's passed into the heavens. He's there for us, and he's there for God. Jesus had to be able... To be touched with man's infirmity in order that we could be touched with the mercy of God. He had to. See, it, it wasn't like this an optional thing that Jesus, this, it absolutely had to, had to happen. He had to be able to identify with where we at. So if we are to have confidence to overcome when we're tempted, then we must be able to trust that Jesus is able to do what he promised. He he, God set him there. Now, God doesn't, doesn't have a trust issue with Jesus, and neither does anybody who's walking by faith. See, faith, faith compels you to, to trust. I have, a I have a merciful and a faithful high priest. I have. He's right there. God set him there for me to, to bring me to glory. So I praise God for our merciful and faithful high priest. Thank you, brother. Amen. Amen.